A habitat is an established and safe solution for isolating an object or work area. Habitats enable hot work in exposed areas to be carried out safely. An overpressure is established inside the habitat, which makes it possible to work without gas from the surrounding area seeping in. As for all hot work, a risk assessment must be carried out in advance. The use of a habitat requires a dedicated habitat safety guard, who has the important task of monitoring the work site. Planning and risk assessment in connection with the construction of the habitat shall meet a number of HSE requirements. The construction of the habitat, as well as the strength of the fabric, must be able to withstand the relevant wind stresses in the area in which it is placed. The fabric must be fire retardant. Escape routes shall be adapted and labelled for safe evacuation. The habitat must be equipped with ignition source control, so that the electrical supply to tools and equipment is shut off if gas is detected. The habitat shall be operated and maintained by personnel who have the necessary competence. When working in the habitat, ergonomics, noise and exposure to chemicals must be taken into consideration. Working together for safety has prepared a recommendation regarding the use of habitats as an ignition source control measure. You can find more information about the various HSE requirements in this document. The rest of this animation presents a summary of the recommendation, which focuses on the safe use of habitats. The habitat shall be equipped with windows, so that the safety responsible outside the habitat can see and maintain control over the work inside the habitat. Communication must be established with the central control room, and the habitat system shall be equipped with both audible and visual alarms. Welding equipment must be placed inside the habitat, since these are not usually X approved. The safety functions within the habitat shall be checked and tested before use, and inspected daily in accordance with checklists. Checklists shall be stored together with the active work permit. The habitat must be constructed so that an overpressure of a minimum of 50 pascals can be established. The habitat can lose overpressure after just a few seconds of the door being open and should therefore be equipped with a self-closing door. The fan or compressor should be placed in a safe area to ensure that no flammable gases are pulled into the habitat and air supply system. Electrical and pneumatic fans shall be X approved for use in classified areas and feature an emergency stop device. The fan shall be shut down and damper closed if gas is detected at the air inlet or the emergency stop device shall be used. For work in the habitat which represents an ignition source, even after the electricity or gas supply to the habitat has been cut off, the fan unit and damper must be independent of the working electrical current to ensure continued overpressure in such situations. The habitat must be equipped with at least three external gas detectors. When the habitat is used with any gas sources within the habitat itself, one of the gas detectors should be placed inside the habitat at the lowest level possible. The executing technician is responsible for carrying out regular checks to ensure that the gas detectors are correctly placed. The habitat should be equipped with a zinc bucket for used welding electrodes and appropriate fire extinguishing equipment both inside and outside of the habitat. Water bottles or water tanks for cooling the workplace should also be available in the immediate vicinity. The area around the work site inside the habitat must be covered with fire retardant material such as a fire blanket so that no sparks or hot work damage equipment or the habitat. There must be sufficient emergency lighting inside the habitat. X approved flashlights should be available as a backup. A knife should also be available so that workers can cut themselves out of the habitat if necessary. When the habitat is not used for an extended period of time, it should be opened to allow air to flow through. Any temporary safety measures should be returned to normal operation. After use, the habitat and other temporary equipment should be removed as quickly as possible so that the facility's operations can be returned to normal.
There are often large amounts of dust inside the habitat, so appropriate personal protective equipment must be used when removing the habitat. The recommendation contains useful checklists, which summarize the requirements relating to the use of habitats. Use them.